my cheating wife was caught by me, and she threatened to accuse me of, abuse.so, abuse. So I installed cameras that exposed her lies and helped me get the divorce. Just a few days ago, my children discovered a small bunny and brought it back to our house. They begged us to keep it, but we really don't have the space to keep a wild rabbit because we already have a number of other pets. The bunny was of an age where it could take care of itself, and I made an effort to approach my children in a kind manner and explain that it must return to its family. Despite their sadness, they consented to taking it back. However, I was unable to accompany them because I was preoccupied with my work, so my wife went instead. You should take the rabbit to some thorn bushes at the end of the property and let it go there because that is the safest location to do it. I urged her to do so. We reside in a rural region that is teeming with hostile animals. As a result, I went back to work, but, a little while later, my children came rushing back into the house, crying loudly, and my wife followed after her in an attempt to calm them down. When I inquired about what had transpired, my older informed me that Mama had instructed them to let the rabbit play in the middle of the yard, and a hawk ended up stealing it. Even more, they detailed the screams that the tiny bunny made. As a result of my wife's refusal to let things go in the manner that I had recommended, I felt both ashamed and angry. She excused herself by stating that because it was just a bunny, the children will eventually get over it. On the other hand, I told her it was completely incorrect, and I cautioned her about potential dangers, yet, now our children had to witness that unfortunate bunny being taken away by a hawk. For a period of many days, both of our children retreated to their respective rooms and ceased communicating with their mother. When she makes an effort to communicate with them, they refer to her as the Bunny K. I have attempted to mediate the situation, but my children are still upset, and I am still upset with my wife for the way things have transpired. She is upset with me because I have not been providing her with assistance, and she has stated that as husband and wife, we are always expected to help one another. A disagreement ensued between us, during which I brought out the numerous instances in which she has failed to have my back. She, too, began crying, and she has now gone to our room to cry because she is upset. My view is that I made a mistake. Now, a buddy of mine suggested that I inquire in this location. Yes, I am aware that hawks have a need for food as well, and they may be found all across our region. I simply did not want my children to witness anything that was so young. They are between the ages of four and five. The woman I married was a city girl, while I was raised in the countryside. When I was a kid, whenever we were in a scenario like this with a wild animal that had been captured, we would make an effort to release it in a certain location where it would have a chance to fight back. My wife did not hear me yell at her. In which part of my post does it specifically state that I did that? Certainly, I reprimanded her, but I refrained from yelling at her, not even when we began to dispute later on. So that the children wouldn't be able to hear us, we did that in a whisper. Due to the fact that I was unable to leave my workplace, I was unable to accompany them in their attempt to free the bunny. For the half of the week that I work from home, I am required to be close to the phone at all times in order to answer a call while I am on the clock, unless it is during my lunch break. In addition, I have never ever referred to my wife by the nickname BK, which our children have now given her as a result of the incident with the rabbit. I have made an effort to get them to stop. I will not refer to my wife in such a manner because it is demeaning, and my behavior would be akin to that of a bully. I am sorry for the numerous modifications that have been made, however my children were not playing in the yard without being monitored. At the time that they discovered the bunny, my wife, who is a stay-at-home mom, was present with them. When they came sprinting back to the home with everything, I had to convince them that it was necessary for them to let go of everything. Despite the fact that I can't believe I'm going to have to create another edit, people keep pointing out something, no, this wasn't taken from a video that was originally posted online. Even though I haven't watched the video in question, I have no doubt that it exists. Is it really that shocking that this event might happen to some persons other than those who recorded a video of the same kind of situation? Hawks are known to attack and kill small animals on a regular basis. On the contrary, I do not believe that. With the exception of the home and a single tree, the majority of my land is covered with grass and is extremely flat. At the time of the last mowing, which took place on Sunday, the grass on my four acres was relatively short. That unfortunate rabbit might as well have been carrying a mark on its back because hawks are always flying around the area trying to get them. I have been protecting newborn chicks with my old pellet pistol ever since I was a child, and I have been fighting hawks ever since. I told my wife to let the rabbit go in the bushes because they are one of their favorite things to grab. 
little bunnies are practically one of their favorite things to grasp. When I was a kid, whenever I heard adults say things like hawks gotta eat too, circle of life, or UDA for defying nature, I was so damn sick and tired of hearing those things. For the sake of my grandparents, I was tasked with guarding animals from hawks. In addition, farmers have the right to defend their animals from being attacked by predators. In spite of the fact that the hawks would have taken all of the newborn chicks they want on a daily basis, we were not going to simply allow them come in and take them. The fact that I was out there with a pellet gun did, in fact, serve to discourage the hawks more than anything else else. I was never successful in shooting one down. Oh, yes, I did manage to hit a few, but only just. The only thing it ever did was cause them to flee and switch off their heads. In addition, it has been 25 years since I last fired a shot at a hawk. Taking a live shot was never something I enjoyed doing. It was my grandfather who was the one who went out into the wilderness with real rifles, killing hawks and coyotes. Over the course of my childhood, I was intimately familiar with hawks capturing small creatures. The majority of predators, including hawks, are opportunists, yet they have little trouble locating food regardless of where they are in our region. The reason I wanted to let the bunny go in the bushes is because of this. Nevertheless, as I mentioned in a previous edit, I was unable to leave my desk, which is something that a great number of people still do not appear to comprehend or did not bother to read. I am not sure if this is the appropriate area to post this, but I am unable to think of any other place where I could submit it. For the benefit of those who remember me, I am the individual whose wife forced our children to release a wild bunny in the middle of the yard. I had suggested to her that they should take the bunny to the bushes in order to release it in a secure manner. The bunny was taken by a hawk right in front of both of our children, who were between four and five years old at the time, and they went into a state of panic on their mother. After that, they came back to me in tears, running back to me. Following the revelation of her affair, our children began referring to their mother as the bunny slaughterer. This moniker seems fitting at this point in time, and other people also referred to her in this manner. The events that transpired with that unfortunate bunny are a thing of the past in comparison to what I have to tell you right now. Following the conclusion of my divorce a few months ago, I am now able to utter these words as a free man. Please fasten your seatbelts because this is going to be quite lengthy and difficult. To clarify, the abbreviation AP stands for a fair partner. I apologize for not making this more distinct earlier. It is true that I showed my wife the initial post that I made on Reddit, and she was quite upset with me. To such an extent that it resulted in a heated argument, and as a consequence, I was subjected to silence for an additional week. After the event with the rabbit, I made an effort to get my children to stop mistreating their mother, even if they were subjected to timeouts and small groundings as a kind of punishment. However, the BS nickname continued to be used whenever our children became furious with their mother. After a couple of weeks, my wife finally gave in to her habit of giving me the cold shoulder and admitted that she ought to have listened to me regarding the rabbit and should have brought it to the bushes according to what I had suggested. She stated that she simply found herself in a position where she needed to defend herself since she did not want to be in mistake. In addition to accepting that apology, I have also apologized to myself for writing the post on Reddit. It was my desire for us to attend marriage therapy, but she declined my request. Due to the fact that she pretended that there was nothing wrong with our marriage, I made the decision not to pursue the matter any further because it appeared that things were getting significantly better. However, after a few weeks had passed, my oldest child approached me and asked if she could share something with me. It wasn't just the bunny that was making her so angry with her mother, there was another cause as well, but she was too afraid to tell me about it. After reassuring her, I informed her that she may confide in me about anything. Honestly, what she said astonished me and completely altered the course of events in an instant. During the course of several months, she stated that Mama had been bringing a man over on certain Saturdays. It was when I was at work that I had mentioned that he was her extraordinary friend. Through a variety of bribes, she was able to convince our children to be silent about it. Nonetheless, my eldest child acknowledged that there was a significant problem with the situation. It took her some time to muster up the nerve to tell me what she was thinking. It is really easy for children to learn new things and acquire knowledge. The dismissal of the realities is something that I find really annoying. Recently, I had seen that my wife was behaving in a strange manner. In her interactions with everyone, especially the children, she had been more abrupt. As soon as I showed her my first post, I attempted to have a conversation with her about it, however, she immediately began ranting about anything and everything that she could think of. Criticized my physical appearance, my personality, 
my routines, and even my family on my side of the family. She even brought up the fact that I used to be a smoker. I gave up more than ten years ago. After that, she resorted to shutting me out of our bedroom and crying so loudly that it could be heard throughout the entire house. Because of this, when my oldest child came to me, I was finally able to put two and two together. The mood swings she experienced while she was pregnant with both of our children were quite similar to the conduct she exhibited while she was cheating on us. Comparable, I say, since, according to the information that I've got from scouring the internet, as well as what my friends and even a counselor have told me, it was even more severe. It was a combination of hormones and the fact that she had been unfaithful that caused my wife to be quite grumpy. It is not possible for me to assert that I am an expert in psychology, nonetheless, it does appear to make sense. Despite the fact that I wanted everything to be a misunderstanding, I promptly placed an order for a few covert cameras and set them up without anyone knowing about it. Just to make sure that no one at home would see them, I had them sent to my place of employment. After that, I scheduled them on a day when my wife was going out with her friends to enjoy a night out with the girls. The process of hooking them up and connecting them to the Wi-Fi took very little effort. Within a short period of time, I was able to watch every area of the house using my personal computer at home, my laptop, and my computer at work. Initially, I was concerned that I might have gone more than I should have. My assumption was that if it proved out that I was mistaken, I would be able to remove the cameras and no one would ever find out about it. Nevertheless, my worst concerns were realized, as I was able to gather a substantial amount of evidence in just the first week. One of my wife's previous co-workers is the person she has chosen to go through with as her affair partner, AP. I was able to recall him very well because he appeared to have a tight relationship with my wife whenever I encountered him at a variety of events. After becoming pregnant with our first child, my wife decided to give up her job and devote herself to becoming a full-time mother. At the time, it was a decision that we arrived at together as a couple. Even though they were no longer her closest friends, my wife maintained her relationships with the people she had worked with in the past. The information that I am about to share with you has pretty much caused everyone to despise her. I'll begin by saying that the AP is around 10 years younger than my wife. At her previous place of employment, she served as a mentor to him in order to fill the position she had left, and the two of them remained close. Not even close. Although both my wife and I are above the age of 40, it would be impossible to tell from the way she looks. Quite simply, she is quite beautiful. She was frequently misidentified as someone in their 20s, and I believe she took advantage of the fact that she was misidentified. After everything was said and done, I decided to tell my sister about what was going on and show her the film that was captured by the nanny cams. She told me that she had suspected for some time and that she had witnessed my wife in a nearby bar getting a little too close with a man who was not me. She added that she had seen her doing this. However, they did not kiss or engage in any other sexual activity while she was watching, rather, they focused their attention on the shoulders and lower back. Due to the fact that she was uncertain, she did not inform me sooner. In the end, I decided to purchase a GPS tracker as well, and once I received it at my place of employment, I concealed it in the trunk of my wife's vehicle. The tracker was followed by my sister and her husband on the next night that my wife was meant to spend with her friends. They agreed to assist me in my endeavor. She traveled to a location that was 20 miles away from where she typically visits, which was an entirely different location. Next, she went to meet with the Associated Press. When my sister and brother-in-law were watching them from their car, they saw that the AP kept touching her belly while they were chatting. This continued for a considerable amount of time. Moreover, they took a video of this event. After watching the video, I was convinced that she was certainly carrying his child at the time. Due to the fact that she was so irritable at home, my sister and Bill were the ones who had to try to calm me down because I had become a complete disaster. Despite the fact that my sister advised me that drinking was the worst thing I could do at the moment, I was still considering using alcohol as a form of self-medication instead. After that, I made the decision to take a leave of absence from work, but I lied to my wife and said that I was going on a business trip. Despite the fact that she didn't put much effort into concealing her joy at the prospect of my departure for a while, she couldn't have been more thrilled about it. Is this woman who she is? You are correct in assuming that she is not the person I wed nearly 20 years ago, right? Is it possible that someone who is an identical replica of her has taken her place at some point? Is she a member of the persona of the pod people? Is it true that I have ever known her? As I continued to think about it, I found that it made less and less sense to me. Therefore, 
I came to the realization that attempting to make sense of anything would not be beneficial to me in the long run. Due to the fact that my children enjoy spending time with their aunt and uncle in the city, my sister and brother-in-law consented to keep my children for a few days. I had cameras installed all over the building. The opening that my wife had been looking for was provided by this. After I had left, she called AP, and he arrived that evening to spend the night. This happened only a few hours after I had left. Regarding the activities that they carried out around the house, I will not go into any specifics, you are free to fill in those particulars on your own. On top of everything else, they were constantly making jokes about me at the same time. During their conversation, they were candid about their unborn child and how they wanted to figure out what to do before her tummy began to show. At that point, she was already more than three months ahead in her pregnancy, and there was no way that it could be mistaken for mine. Since AP is of a different race than I am, it would be rather simple to determine that the baby would not be mine from the moment it was born. My spouse dismissed AP's concerns and stated that they had a considerable amount of time to straighten out the situation. After that, she stated without any shame that this wasn't even her first affair, even though she had slept with another man when she was 29 years old. She was sick of being around a dull man like myself who made her feel old, and she was sick of having to act like the nice housewife. She told AP that she was sick of being forced to act like a housewife. In addition, she would have abandoned me a long time ago if it weren't for the fact that I am so financially secure. It was even her assistant principal who inquired about her plans for our children. Her exact words were, he can have them. She didn't even want to be with our children anymore because she believed that they liked me more, and she was going to have her baby anyhow, so she didn't want to be around them. Because I was so disgusted, I came dangerously close to throwing the laptop on the floor of my motel room. However, I managed to keep my composure and instead drank a couple beers from a six-pack, went to a diner for supper, and then watched a movie. Following that, I remained in bed for the most part of the night, merely ruminating on my thoughts until I finally dozed off. I was under the impression that I knew my wife quite well. I felt a deep affection for her, and I would have given her everything I had. However, in the end, there are those people who are simply bad, and until they expose their actual self, you will never truly know who they are. At that same moment, I made up my mind to kill her through the process of divorce. If you get me furious enough, I can become your worst nightmare. Normally, I am a very kind and quiet man, but if you get me upset enough, I mean it. The very following day, I went to a law office that specializes in divorce attorneys and asked for the most aggressive attorney that they had available. Due to the fact that I reside in a state that is considered to be at fault, my wife was in a bad situation the instant I caught her having an affair on tape. At first, the attorney was skeptical about my desire to hire him so soon. However, after I provided him with a more in-depth explanation of the case and even showed him some of the video footage, he gained his confidence. It was at that moment that he smiled in a mischievous manner, and we shook hands. In light of the fact that this was the kind of case that divorce attorneys enjoy getting their teeth into, he stated that he would begin immediately. A few weeks later, on a day when I was working from home and the children were attending school, I had my wife and my children served. The oldest child was in kindergarten, and the smallest child was in preschool. The local sheriff brought the documents directly to my wife's attention and gave them to her. It was all captured by the cameras. The moment she opened the package, read what was inside and then went completely insane, she appeared to be so terrified. Despite the fact that she came racing into my office to yell at me, I managed to keep my cool and remain calm. My mental state had already been entirely checked out of our marriage a long time ago. I had just informed my wife that I had made up my mind and that I wanted her to leave my house even though she wanted to dispute with me. The only person who has ever made a payment toward the mortgage is myself. She yelled at me that I don't have the right to treat her in this manner and then she threatened to tell people that I had beaten her if I took her to court, which would also result in me being fired from my job. I told her that she could go ahead and make up any lie she wanted to, it would not be of any assistance to her. Since she is already pregnant with her AP's child, it is not as if she did not intend to take advantage of me in any way during this pregnancy. When she asked me how much I knew, she looked at me with wide eyes. I basically informed her that I had enough information and that I wanted her to leave. I claimed that I knew enough. In response, she refused and stated that it was her house just as much as it was mine. She then went back to locking herself in the bedroom. I was able to observe her having a breakdown on the bedroom cams, after which she pulled out her phone and dialed the number for the police. 
despite the fact that she was behaving as though she was in a state of utter fear, she had a significant smile on her face while she was doing it. She has a lot of acting qualities. If it weren't for the fact that I already knew she was a liar, I would have believed that performance the moment it was delivered over the phone. I stood outside with the front door wide open, waiting for the cops to arrive, and I instructed them to report immediately upon their arrival. In the beginning, they were enraged and prepared for a confrontation, however, the house was spotless, and there were no indications that they had gotten into any kind of altercation. During the time that she was crying and calling me a psychopath, my wife came rushing out of the bedroom and grabbed the vest that was worn by one of the officers nearby. I approached one of the other cops and requested permission to present them with evidence of what was actually taking place. He granted my request, which came as a complete surprise to my wife because she was unaware that I had recorded her. The officer was shown the footage from the cameras on a laptop that showed my wife saying that she would make things up in order to ruin my life. I also showed him the footage from the living room after she ran out of my office and into the master bedroom down the hall. Finally, I showed him the footage from the camera in the bedroom that showed her lying to the police and calling them. Without a doubt, I had filmed everything from a variety of perspectives. In spite of the fact that she gave the police the impression that I had struck her, not only were there no marks on her body, but the cameras that were installed all over the house showed an entirely different tale. After that, I presented the authorities with a thumb drive and informed them that it contained all of the video footage they required of her calling them under pretenses that were not true. In spite of all that had happened, my wife continued to insist that I was an abuser. She even attempted to argue that the recordings were unlawful and, as a result, could not be permitted to be used in court. Nevertheless, I asserted that they are within the bounds of the law because they were security cameras installed within my own residence and were not filmed in public. It was my wife that turned to the authorities and requested that they take action, which they subsequently did. Despite the fact that she was the one who was placed in handcuffs, she began crying like a kid. It was all I could do to sit there and shake my head. When I was younger, this was the woman I had loved for a very long time. My impression of her was that she was a wonderful, clever, and charming individual. The opposite could not have been more true. While the police were taking her away, she cried that they couldn't do this to her, but she didn't put up much of a fight, otherwise, she would have been charged with resisting arrest. After that, I terminated all of her credit cards that were in my name and halted all further payments into the joint bank account. As a result, she was forced to use only her own money to bail herself out of jail. She was far from being in a state of financial destitution because she had accumulated a substantial amount of savings over the course of those years that she continued to work. I had taken the liberty of packing a few of her suitcases full of her clothes and some other stuff, and when she came back for her car, I had left the key on the seat, which meant that she was unable to even find her way back into the house. My wife's parents did make an appearance to talk to me the day after she was released from jail on her own responsibility. At first, they were only able to rely on the erroneous account that she had provided to them, which was essentially the same thing that she had attempted to tell the authorities. In particular, her father was prepared to launch an assault on me. His size and strength belie his advanced years. On the other hand, when I inquired as to whether he was aware of anything concerning my wife's affair or her pregnancy, he appeared to be very astonished and allowed me the opportunity to explain myself. I took out the laptop once more in order to demonstrate to my in-laws what I had filmed. Following the revelation of the reality, they expressed their disapproval and stated that they were unable to accept the fact that this individual was their daughter. They expressed their regret to me and assured me that they will get in touch with me in order to assist me with my children. After that, they confronted my wife about the lies that she had been telling by calling her on speakerphone in front of me. Before they confirmed that they were with me and viewed the recordings, she made an attempt to double down. They were aware of everything, and they demanded that she leave their home as soon as possible. I was told by my in-laws that they did not raise her to be a self-centered adulterer who would try to frame her own husband, and that she was no longer their daughter. She attempted to backtrack, but my in-laws refuted her claims. They immediately disowned her over the phone, and then they hung up before my wife could say anything else. This occurred before she did anything else. She made numerous attempts to call them back, but they did not return her calls. They returned home to find that she had not only vanished, but she had also ruined a number of items that were located throughout their home, which caused my mother-in-law to experience emotional distress. The fact that my ex-parents continue to visit their grandchildren on occasion is one of the reasons I continue to think of them as my in-laws, despite the fact that my ex is no longer actively involved in our lives. 
After a while, my wife returned with her partner in the affair in tow in order to pack her belongings. The person who was having an affair would not even come inside the house, and my wife would not even talk to me while she was making her way through the remaining items in her possession. She was aware that there were cameras in every nook and cranny, and she would be doubly damning herself if she attempted anything else. Even though I was there, I was not by myself because my sister and brother-in-law were there to assist me in keeping an eye on her. My sister's husband made it a point to keep a watchful eye on the person who was having an affair from the window. When the children arrived at our house, my wife was still in the process of packing, and she did not make any attempt to communicate with either of them, not even when our youngest child cried out for her. Before she left, she did remove a handful of the photographs that we had of each other from our wedding and flung them on the floor in an attempt to destroy them. Because of the way she looked at me while she was doing it, I believe she was anticipating a response from me. However, because I did not respond to her, she simply took the remainder of her luggage and walked out the door. As soon as she left, I had to make a phone call to my elderly mother in order to ask her to come and stay with me for a bit because I was unable to take care of my children by myself. I was unable to take a significant amount of time off from work, and I did not have many options for daycare. In addition, I requested DNA testing for my children. I was certain that they belonged to me, but a few others have informed me that I should be aware of this just in case. Yes, all of my children are mine, and yes, I did get tested for sexually transmitted infections, and I'm clean, so there's no need to be concerned about that. A little over a week later, my wife came back to my house and told me that she would be willing to settle for a divorce that was completely amicable provided I also agreed to it. To put it another way, if I had accepted, she would have received 50% of everything. On the other hand, I told her that I would not accept it. During the course of the conflict, she more or less admitted to discovering that the law in this state was not on her side. There was considerable back and forth between the two parties. This is the state where we first met, where we became engaged, where we got married, and where we have spent our whole lives. There was no way for her to avoid taking a significant loss unless I agreed to settle, which I did not do. There was no way of avoiding it. I went on to say that she had an affair, which was a betrayal of me, our children, her parents, and pretty much everyone else in the world. I then slammed the door in her face and walked out. I didn't see her again until a few months later, when she appeared in court. She fled in a stealthy manner. At that point, my wife was plainly pretty pregnant, and she had already hired a lawyer to represent her in the divorce court. At the same time, there was no sign of AP. I anticipated that she would lie to the judge, and she did begin to do so on a few occasions, but, I had sufficient video proof to disprove any lies that she offered. In other words, she did not have a chance at all. Her strategy consisted of simply refusing to cooperate and making a variety of demands in an effort to delay the divorce proceedings. In the first place, she wanted the majority of my savings, and she also wanted a comprehensive list of everything else that I had. Another thing that she wanted was for me to buy out her share of the house, despite the fact that she had never paid into it. I, on the other hand, was demanding that she be removed from the house deed and that she be granted full custody of the children. I was able to provide video proof to support her claims that she no longer genuinely cared for our children and that she would fabricate lies in order to convince us of her statements. The judge did not allow my wife to continue to drag things out and change her demands on a regular basis, despite her attempts to delay the proceedings. Considering that she was the one who committed the adultery, she was entitled to very little because she was in a condition of at fault, and the fact that she attempted to frame me just made her situation much more difficult. At the end of the day, she was awarded exclusive custody of our children and was able to walk away with little more than her personal things and a financial settlement that, taking into consideration the circumstances, could be called reasonable. And the automobile that I had previously purchased for her? At the time of the settlement, the title was in my name, yet, I signed it over without any concern for the consequences. Because she had not even attempted to communicate with our children throughout the entirety of the divorce process, I was awarded full custody of them. As of right now, the house is wholly and utterly mine, and I am at liberty from her. My now ex-wife did make an effort to continue talking lies about me to other people before and during the divorce process. However, my sister spread the news about my wife's infidelity, and soon after, all of our mutual acquaintances cut her off when they learned who was telling the truth. After the divorce was finalized, she and her AP packed up and left town together. According to what I've heard, AP was not terminated from his position, nevertheless, he was transferred to a different location. On the other hand, I am aware that my former partner was required to accompany him. 
For all I know, they could have moved him and my ex-girlfriend to Greenland, where they would have been frozen. I am simply relieved that they have both left. My ex-girlfriend ought to have had her baby by now, and I hope that she found the experience to be worthwhile. To be honest, I had no idea that I would be writing something like this on Reddit after I had just finished discussing how my wife had let a bunny go where a hawk could grab it. However, a number of the remarks that I had received in the past on the manner in which my wife was behaving made me realize that I ought to have been paying attention to the warning signs a long time ago. For the entirety of our marriage, I must have been wearing rose-colored glasses, but now that it's ended, I can see things clearly. Any readers who made it through this are deserving of my gratitude. Despite the fact that it was a lot to read, this is how my life is. All of the bank records that could be dug up revealed that I was the only person who ever paid into the house deed, thus I was able to remove my ex-spouse name from the document. My ex-spouse was also quite combative with the judge on multiple occasions, and in a state where the responsibility lies with the spouse, being a confirmed cheater throughout a divorce puts you in a very difficult position. One could compare that to having a prenuptial agreement written against you. I was serious when I mentioned that the law office I went to had the most resentful attorney, and I meant it. The individual resembled both a bear and a shark. The compensation that my wife received was $60,000, and she also received the car that I had purchased at a cost of $50,000 for her a couple of years earlier. After I had finished paying off the car, I gave her the title to the vehicle. My ex-spouse was also still offered a portion of custody of our children, but, once the video of her stating that she no longer cared about them was made public, she decided not to bother with any custody and instead voluntarily gave up all rights to our children when she saw that she could not obtain what she wanted. Those who might believe that the authorities would not have arrested my ex-boyfriend for lying should reconsider their assumptions. The local law enforcement is not to be trifled with, and my former partner, who was wearing a psychotic grin on her face, attempted to paint me as a wife abuser. There is a sufficient amount of grounds for arrest.